Alternate dumbbell curls. Have you ever walked into the gym and see somebody by the dumbbell rack and you're wondering, what the hell are these fucking people doing? Oh, some kind of a dumbbell curl. Well, my goal is to show you guys the proper way to do standing dumbbell curls, seated dumbbell curls, and a seated preacher dumbbell curl. I'm gonna show you everything that I was taught by my coach back in the 80s, Bob Gruskin. Bob Gruskin educated me at a very young age on the proper way to train. Right here is one of my pictures that is actually the cover of my book, Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding. I learned the right way to train. And my job and my goal with these videos on YouTube is to educate you. It's my way of paying it forward to give you the type of education that Bob Gruskin gave to me. I've also filmed training videos where I've, I've attached a link in the description below and I'll talk about more of them at the end of the video. So stay tuned, we'll take this into the gym and we'll get this party started. All right, when I start doing alternate dumbbell curls, I got a pair of 20s in my hand. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my shoulders back. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my right hand first. I break, I break my plane from where my dumbbell's resting on my thigh. And as soon as I do, I'm turning the dumbbell forward. So I'm here, I turn the dumbbell forward, and then I curl up. And I'm squeezing the bicep. So as soon as I break this plane, I start squeezing and tensing the bicep, engaging, muscle engagement. You heard me talk about that in a lot of my videos. So here, muscles engaged, I curl up. And when I get to the top, I give a little bit of a twist with my wrist, bringing my pinky to the inside. And then I come down the same way. So with the left arm, I break the plane, I engage my biceps, I curl up, and then I bring my elbow in slightly and twist my wrist, helping to give me a good peek on the bicep. Okay? A lot of people are doing stuff like this. I don't get it. From here, squeeze. Just like this. And develop your groove. Get into the momentum of it. Controlled. Just like this. I'm not using my body momentum to curl these dumbbells. I'm using my biceps. From the minute I break this plane, I'm coming up, muscles engaged, squeezing, twisting, back down. And I don't bring the dumbbell to a turn until I hit my thigh. I'm here and I come down. So I'm curling all the way up, curling all the way down, and then I'm turning my hands back into my thighs. Just like this. Okay. Something I like to do a lot of is drop set dumbbell curls. I started with the 20s, I would do them to failure. Maybe it's 25 reps, I don't know. It all depends on the kind of pump I'm bringing to this exercise. Sometimes this might be my finishing exercise. Sometimes it might be my first exercise. It all depends on what I wanna do that day. But no matter what, I love drop setting dumbbell curls. I started with the 20s, I'd go to the 15s, I'd go to the 10s, and then I'd go to the fives. And let me tell you, by the time you get to the five pounders, they're gonna feel like 50s, all right? I'm gonna show you another version of these doing them seated, all right? So follow me over here. All right, I'm at the seated bench now. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the standing dumbbells. The only difference is I don't have that easy twisting motion that I had being standard, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I bring my legs together in front of me. Again, the dumbbells are at my side. I curl up, because if I sat like this, I ain't curling nothing, nothing's going up, right? Bring your legs in closer, it's kind of a ball crusher, but oh well. Bring your legs in closer. Same technique I did as the standing, I'm gonna do as the seated. As soon as I go to break that plane, the dumbbell is curling upward. I engage my bicep, I curl up, and then I bring the twist in, and I come down. Same thing I did as I was standing. 
just like this. I've seen people do double arm dumbbell bicep curls like this. They're okay. It's never been a it's never been a go-to exercise to me because double arm I'm getting with preacher curls, I'm getting with barbell curls. When it comes to the alternate dumbbell curls, I like to concentrate on one bicep at a time. Getting into that arm, squeezing it, concentrating on that muscle and that muscle alone. Just like this. And I develop my groove where I get a good controlled repetition range going. Just like this. In my opinion, dumbbell curls are very important when it comes to bicep shaping and bicep peaking. You can isolate so much doing a dumbbell curl. And the key to the dumbbell curl is this twisting motion where I'm bringing my elbow in and I'm twisting my, my wrist to the outside. That's giving you that hard peak and you squeeze the shit out of it. Just like this, the elbow comes in as much as possible that twist and that squeeze. Very, very important to do that during this exercise. I'm now gonna show you single arm dumbbell preacher bench curls. I love doing preachers with a barbell. You could also do preacher curls with a dumbbell. It's a very good bicep peaking exercise. So let me take this over to the preacher bench. All right, I'm over here at the preacher bench. This is a smaller version, which is perfect for single arm bicep curls on the preacher bench. You could use a wider preacher bench, it doesn't matter but I'm gonna use a 10 pound dumbbell. I raised the preacher bench to just about where my rib box starts, so the top of my stomach meets my ribs. This way it allows me to put my entire arm over the bench. Now, preachers is an exercise where you can really tear your bicep if you let this weight just drop. You don't wanna do that. Bicep tears are no joke, they'll end, they'll, they'll, it's an ending a career-ending injury, okay? The only thing that's gonna fix it is surgery. So what I do is I start with weight that I can handle. This isn't about let me see how much I can do. This is let me use weight that I can handle to control the exercise and get the most out of the bicep from this exercise. So I start here, I let the dumbbell come down. Everything is controlled. I let it come down and elongates the bicep right into the tie and into the bend of the elbow. And then I curl straight up. You can give it a twist if you're able to do that. Come back down, curl up and squeeze. Down, curl up and squeeze. You could also tell it's kind of giving me that split in the middle of my bicep also. Just like this. And then I continue with controlled repetition. And I'll take this into the high rep range depending on the type of pump that I came to this exercise with. You know, if I started with barbell curls and then did double arm preacher and then did dumbbell rack drop sets and then came to this, you're going to be spent. So you might not be able to take it into that high, high rep range you hear me talk about so much, but you take this to failure, all right? Failure is only a number that you can put on it. Failure for everybody is gonna be different. It all depends on the type of pump you bring into this exercise. So when I'm done with the right one, I then do the left one. And again, I come down, I let it elongate all the way down, and I curl it all the way down. The muscles engage, you can see my arms shaking a little bit, and I'm squeezing the bicep, just like this. And I'm doing repetitions that are continuous but I'm squeezing every rep at the top. And I'm trying to get that little bit of a twist in my wrist. Bringing my wrist, turning to the outside. Okay? Just like this. This isn't a game of speed. This is a game of controlled repetitions and keeping that muscle under tension. Time under tension is something you hear a lot about. Can you do partial reps with this? Yes, you can, but I'm not a big fan of partial reps for biceps. For biceps, I like the full range of motion because I want the elongation of the muscle. 
a lot of people you see and do a really poor form on bicep work, they got a gap between the elbow bend and where the bicep starts. Well, if you do preacher curls the correct way, you're gonna fill that gap in. So I'm not a big fan of doing partial reps with biceps, okay? I put these videos together because my goal is to educate you the way I was given this education from a very, very young age with my coach, Bob Gruskin, back in the 80s. You know, Bob taught me everything about training and now I'm paying it forward, keeping his legacy alive. Bob passed away a few years ago. He is known as the guru in bodybuilding and has had so many, so many champions and I'm proud to say that I was one of them back in the 80s. So this is my way of paying it forward to make sure that you guys and gals get the right information when it comes to training and diet, and nutrition, getting the bullshit that you see out there on social media, all the look at me, look at me, that's fucking garbage. I'm here to teach you guys how to train and how to train correctly. I've also put together some training videos where I go into so much more detail than you see in my regular YouTube videos. I cover all the body parts. I cover the keto diet and reversing type two diabetes. I also cover contest preparation for the competitors, male and female. My training videos start out with the beginner, intermediate, and advanced training techniques. There's so much more information and if you guys want to take your training to the next level, I highly encourage you guys to purchase these videos. There's a link in the description below for the Buy Me A Coffee site. It'll take you to where the videos are and you'll be able to purchase these videos. They're not expensive. They're very reasonably priced for the type of information that you're getting in these videos. I promise you, I'm getting very, very high reviews from all the people that have purchased these videos. They absolutely love them. So until next time, I'll see you guys in the gym. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Peace out.